All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is a show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on data modes, moving information back and forth. Trying to reimagine amateur radio in the information age. Hey, today's going to be a little bit different. We're not going to talk about data modes, but we're going to talk about ham radio best practices, kind of how to operate a radio. You know, what are some con conventions that you might use? Basically, how to not be a lid when you're using ham radio. And we're going to do that this time on KM6. LYW Radio. <laughs> okay, welcome back. You know, this this is turning into a name that tune kind of thing. It's a, that's the bumper music. That's the bumper music for this channel. It's different every time. I'm, I'm actually running out of jingles. I'm going to have to start taking requests. All right, so ham radio best practices. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulations out there that are set forth in your jurisdiction you, you have to follow you follow uh, your, your you know your license is kind of contingent or dependent on that um but there's a lot of other unwritten rules of ham radio you know operations best practices uh, these aren't rules or they're just uh, kind of uh, some conventions that we all came up with as a community to you know help make ham radio fun and smooth as possible for, for everyone. Um, I'm going to come up with a list of those. I did some research. Um, the ARL has a lot of best practices. Um, when, you, when you take your ham test and you study for your ham license, um, they really don't talk about best practices. You know, how to operate the radio, how to have an interaction, you know, know when to say hello, goodbye, whatever. It, it, they, they go more into, you know, the legal stuff um, and, you know, you know, Ohm's law, but they don't really go into best practices and in, in, in how to, you know, operate your radio as a, as a new ham radio operator. Um, so I'm probably guilty of every single one of these little uh, infractions um, at some point or another. I'm still an aspiring ham radio operator. Um, I'm sure I was a lid for a long time. You know, how not to be a lid. I had to actually look that up. What is a lid? So that's actually an old term. I looked it up at newhams.info. And it, historically, it was someone who was, you know, kind of just a, a newbie operator, just kind of a neophyte. They didn't know exactly what they were doing yet. Um, more recently, you know, if you're a lid on ham radio, it's, uh, you know, you're doing something you probably ought to know better, you know, you're just kind of being a dork. Uh, that's what being a lid. So don't be a lid on amateur radio. And these are the best practices to help you not be a lid. But uh, let's start at the top. So I'm going to start at the actual regulations. These are rules you actually have to follow. You know, the rest of them, just take them for what they're worth. You know, uh, best effort there. Um, so the regulations, at least in my jurisdiction here in the FCC, in, in the Americas, is going to be no selling stuff. Don't try to sell things unless it's an amateur radio. No broadcast music. Speaking of broadcasting, don't broadcast. You can't just shout into the air. Um, what you're trying to do is make a contact in amateur radio. If you want to broadcast or do music, there are other frequencies for that that you can lease from uh, the FCC, at least here in Americas. Um, no encryption, so you can't encrypt your communications. Uh, that's a no-no also. And uh, also do your station identification every 10 minutes and at the end of a conversation. Um, all of those are actual regulations. Um, your license is kind of dependent on following those regulations. Now, the rest of these are just best practices, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do these in any particular order. Um, uh, the guiding principle on all of these is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? So that's a, kind of a lifelong guiding principle, and I think that applies to amateur radio. So so just to start out, like, you got, you just got your license, and you've got, a new, got your new transceiver, you tune to a frequency, and you just start shouting into it and hope someone hears you. That's, that's not, that's not going to happen. So there are calling frequencies out there, particularly on VHF and UHF. In Americas, if you want to do that, call on 146.52 megahertz on VHF. There's a UHF frequency, but it's not used as, as often. Now on HF, um, what you can do is shout into a frequency. That's kind of normal to call CQ on HF, but make sure you're using the right portion of the band. Usually the higher the frequency in the band, like the higher half of the band will be for, for, for phone or voice modes, and the lower half will be for data modes. That stuff probably is on the test. So don't just shout into a frequency on your HT. If you use a proper calling frequency or the proper portion of a band to call and try and reach someone, the next big one that's probably the most annoying, I think, for a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of people on repeaters, don't kerchunk the repeater. The, to, to, when you're kerchunking the repeater, you're just pressing transmit and seeing if the repeater's there and not saying anything. So never transmit without actually saying anything. It's just annoying. Everyone on the repeater is going to be like, mm, they're going to skinny lip you. See what I did there? You know, they're all going to make that face when you kerchunk the repeater. Now, if you accidentally kerchunk the repeater, and I'm guilty of that, um, call it out. Call it, man. Own it. Just say, oh, I kerchunk. Just say, oh, KM6LYW. 
If you say your call sign really fast, it just means, hey, I'm just owning my kerchunk. That's cool, you know, no judgment. But I don't necessarily want to start a conversation. You know, if I want to start a conversation, that's different. I would say KM6LYW listening. You know, that's how I would start a conversation. Um, so don't kerchunk the repeater, please, guys. So, you know, I know we hear it all day. Sometimes it's inadvertent. If you know you're kerchunked it, call it. Own it. Own your kerchunks. Um, also, we don't ever say the word broadcast. When we're doing amateur radio, we, we do transmissions, okay? We try and connect to other people and have a two-way conversation. We never broadcast. So just remove that word from your vernacular. It just sounds weird. It's awkward in, in amateur radio. Don't say broadcast. There's other frequencies for broadcast. Um, repeater contact procedures. So I think I just touched on this. Don't call CQ on a repeater. That's the bottom line here. Don't, you know, program a repeater in and say, you know, CC, CQ, CQ, this is km 6 lyw don't say that on a repeater. If you want to get a hold of someone on a repeater, like I said, just KM6LYW is probably going to be enough. Or maybe KM6LYW monitoring or listening or on frequency. And someone will probably respond and you have to strike up a conversation and make a new friend. But uh, just, just don't say CQ on a repeater, okay? Um, also, before you even key up on a repeater, listen to it for a while. Some repeaters are different. They're like little talk chat rooms. They're different groups. There's different types of people tend to gravitate towards uh, different repeaters. Some repeaters are really strict and formal, and other ones are really informal, and anything goes, and often does. In fact, you'll actually hear violations of regulations on those repeaters from time to time. And, you know, that's, that's, that's on them. So get to know your repeater before you, you start talking on it to see if it's formal or casual. Uh, another big thing is, you know, a lot of new ham radio operators, you know, they learn what they learned in movies, and that's to use 10 codes and CB lingo. So 10-4, good buddy, you know. <laughs> no, we do not say 10-4, good buddy on amateur radio, okay? Um, what we do, do we do, if we're going to use codes, we use something called Q codes, like, uh, and there's, there's a handful of them, and there's a time to use Q codes and when not to use them. So you're not going to say 10-4, you're not going to say good buddy, okay? But if you need to use an abbreviation, and these kind of from the, the CW world, so the Q codes that might be acceptable to use, and this is generally on HF, less or so on BHF or repeater. So you're going to hear QSL, um, that means did you understand me when it's a question, and QSL means a statement, yeah, I understood you. QTH. What's your, what's your home? That can be a question or a statement. QSY, that means you're going to change frequencies. You hear that from some time, from time to time. And QRZ, you never say QRZ. I don't know why. Just QRZ, that means who are you? Um, a lot of times you, if someone's you know, do, doing a quick CQ going through a lot of stations, you'll just see your QRZ rather than their, their call sign. Um, that means they're wondering who's out there. Uh, another uh, notation is 73. You're going to hear 73 quite a bit. Um, that just means best regards. It's just a code. So these are holdovers from the, the CW or Morse code days, and they're still really active there. And there's a lot more QR codes than that. But those are the ones you're going to find in common use. So know those. Um, use them sparingly on voice or phone modes. Um, if you do want to see if you're in range of a repeater, instead of chunking it, like I said, um, just say, uh, hey, this is KM6LYW. Can I get a radio check, please? Simple, right? If someone's listening, and you, they probably are, people are dying to, to answer radio checks, at least where I live, and they're going to say, hey, you know, you're coming in uh, you know, about 80% and with a little hiss behind you. Uh, that's, a, that's like a, a signal report on, on a repeater. Um, or they might say you're coming in full quieting. I didn't know what the hell that meant um, when I first heard it. Full quieting. That's the best possible signal. That means there's no hiss behind you. You're coming in like you're, you're right next to the guy. So full quieting is like the best possible signal report when you're calling for a radio check on a particular repeater. All right, so... Um, the phonetic alphabet. Um, I'm sorry, I got funny memes on here. I wanted, I wanted to cut, <laughs> I wanted to come up with some best practices ones. Um, so for the phonetic alphabet, don't use it on VHF. Definitely use it on HF. Definitely use it when someone's like trying to copy down your call sign, like during a contest or making an official contact. You might use the phonetic alphabet. That's Alpha, Bravo, Delta, Echo, you know, X-Ray, Kilo, Mike, Six, Lima, Yankee, Whiskey. That's the phonetic alphabet. But when you're on VHF, I, you know, usually the radio clarity, the audio clarity um, and range is sufficient that they can make out KM6LYW. So the phonetic alphabet's important on HF. Less or so on VHF, um, but use it if someone's having trouble copying your uh, your call sign. Uh, this is this is the one I'm still guilty of. I don't know. I, I have a gene that doesn't allow me to do this. So hold down transmit for like a, a whole second before you start speaking. So I say click KM6LYW. Don't say 
KM6 all IW all in one motion. Um, so especially on repeaters, because a repeater usually needs, you know, like a half a second to, to spin up, um, at, to lock on to your CTCSS tone um, and actually start transmitting. So you're going to get clipped off if you press transmit at the same moment you start talking. So that's a, kind of a best practice. I don't know why I'm still, I'm still guilty of that one, you guys. So hold push to talk for a moment before talking. Um, so moving over to HF, um, actually what we could do is put on the radio here. So moving over to HF, um, you usually have to have an antenna, you haven't, like most HF radios have an antenna tuner, right? Uh, just to, to match impedance with your antenna, do some antenna matching. So if you see a signal over here, I'm going to line up on this guy, he's talking here. Uh, of course he was, no he isn't. Um, don't tune up over a conversation, all right? So here's a guy talking here. Don't press the tuner while you can hear them. What you can do is just move up one, two, three or four kilohertz. You don't hear them. And then press the tune button on your radio, okay? Now most, you're gonna tune up on that frequency. Now you can go back and talk to that guy. Now go back now once you're in tune. Most radios have like a 10 kilohertz window um, where they will have memories for tuning solutions for a particular frequency. So if you go up or down three kilohertz, tune up your radio there where no one can hear you because the tuning sound, it, it makes a huge noise. It's a big tone and you're just blasting right over the guy who's transmitting. So when you're tuning up, do not tune up over a conversation. Go up three kilohertz or down three kilohertz, it doesn't matter. That's probably how your radio is gonna remember tuning solutions is usually 10 kilohertz increments. Um, so another one, if you were doing data modes, you know, a lot of people are, uh, have this use FL Digi and there's a thing called RSID, RSSID, Reed Solomon ID, where there's just some information at the beginning of a transmission that identifies the nature of the mode. You know, it could be Contessa, uh, Hell Schreiber or something like that. And you want people to know what mode that is so they can switch to that mode and listen to you. Now there's certain modes where you don't do the RSID. So don't do it on PSK 31. Don't do it on RTTY. If, you, if you're doing your RSID tone in FL Digi, transmitting that before your transmission, um, that's kind of a lid maneuver because those are highly recognizable and common um, modes on amateur radio. So th that one's kind of obscure. Um, so this is something they don't teach you either on, on ham radio, is how to call CQ on a uh, HF frequency. So I'm just going to go over what I hear all the time. I don't know if this is right or wrong. I'm gonna give, this is going to feel silly. I'm actually going to call out. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I am on a blank frequency, and I'm going to listen for a second. And you'd be surprised. You'd be sitting on a blank frequency, an active frequency, and suddenly someone keys up. A lot of times you'll hear one half of the conversation and not the guy that's right next to you. So you think it's it's free, but it's not. So right here, this actually looks pretty good. I don't see anyone there. So I'm going to say, uh, is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KM6LYW. And then I'm going to listen. Of course, I don't hear anything. Um, but I'm going to wait and I'm going to do it again. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KM6LYW. All right, still nothing heard. So at this point, I'm going to call CQ. Now, this is just a little bit different for everybody. So I'm calling CQ in 14276. So that's going to be CQ, CQ, CQ. Hello, CQ. This is Kilo, Mike, Six, Lima, Yankee, Whiskey. CQ, CQ, CQ. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. KM6, LYW, CQ. And then I'm going to wait and listen. Oftentimes, you'll hear someone tuning up on your frequency. Go ahead and wait. That's probably them tuning up because they want to talk to you, or someone's just going to answer. and say, hey, KM6LYW, this is so-and-so. You know, my name is you know, Bob, and uh, I'm in uh, Los Angeles. And that's how the conversation starts. So that's kind of how I would call CQ, um, and that would be like a rag chew. Um, a lot of people are, are calling uh, CQ, and they're doing they're just shouting uh, uh, position or the shouting RST signal reports and call signs. They're just collecting contacts and putting pins in a map. Those are people who are not rag chewing. All right. So if you hear someone going, talking really quickly, just collect, collecting call signs and position report and uh, signal reports, um, don't try and rag chew with that guy. He's just kind of contesting on, on his own. So, so be aware of that. Are they rag chewing or are they just collecting uh, call signs and signal reports? So speaking of signal reports, what is a signal report? Now, there's something called an RST. Someone will say, hey, what's my RST or what's my report? So uh, RST stands for readability, uh, signal strength, and tone. So a lot of times you say, hey, you know, this is KM6 LYW. Uh, I've got you at 5.9. 5.9. Five, nine. Five, nine. What does 5.9 mean? So the 5 is the readability. It's, be it's a, between 1 and 5. It's how well can you really understand that person. Now, if you can understand every word, it's a 5. You say the readability is 5. Now, the second number, that's your signal report. 
That's, you just read that off the S meter on your radio. Uh, oftentimes it goes up to nine, uh, or, you know, seven, eight, nine. So, you know, if, if you can understand every word they say, but there's a, your, your signal, the meter, your S meter has, says seven, you would say five, seven. If you don't understand every word they, they're saying, you maybe would say four, seven. You know, that means I didn't really understand you. Um, if someone gives you a signal report of like three, three, uh, that means they really didn't understand every word, and they got you at a three on the S meter. The S meter goes from one to nine, so you probably don't want to rag chew um, with that person. That's basically what they're saying. It's, it's really too hard to have that conversation. So that's your RST or signal report. Uh, let me make sure I got all of these. All right, and some people will actually be contesting. So if, you, if you're hearing someone just going through call signs and, and hear states and counties being relayed back and forth, that person is going doing a contest. Contests are a ton of fun, um, but research the contest before you engage with a contester. Um, look up the date, uh, radio contest, and see what kind of contests are going on there. A lot of times you're just collecting call signs as fast as you can, or maybe trying to reach as many states and counties as you can. Every contest is a little different, but know if, you're, if you're calling back to a contester or not. Um, I'm not going to go into CW here, but I thought I'd just mention it. That the ARL has some really good best practices on uh, CW rules. So there's things like trying to match their speed. You know, maybe they're a slow CW coder. I get that. I can't do it at all. I can't do CW. I, I, I am envious of everyone who can. There's things like tone matching, zero beat, you know, really, and, you know, and filtering. Um, that's CW... Uh, not rules, but more best practices. There are a lot of those. and I really can't go into those here. I just don't know enough about CW. Um, know when to keep a conversation short or know when to go ahead and rag chew. You. you know, if someone says, I'll be clear on your final, that means they are out of here. That means once you stop speaking, they're gone. Um, so that, that's what that means, clear on your final. That means they, they want to leave. Some people want to have a rag chew. Some people don't. It's kind of subtle to know which is what. So maybe listen to their previous conversations um, to see if that's the kind of mode that they're in. So back on the on the VHF, uh, let's say you're back on the repeater, um, you can interrupt a conversation. Now I know it sounds rude, but sometimes people would encourage you to interrupt a conversation. You know, maybe you can get three people, three or four people involved in a conversation. And there's a there's a way you can interrupt a conversation. So. It is also a good practice to leave a good long gap between transmissions. Let's say someone's done talking and then you want to respond. Give it a couple seconds to respond. Just sit there for a second. You know, see if anyone else wants to join in, right? Now, the, a good way to join in is to not say, hey, this is me, blah, blah, blah. Just say one word. It could be info, you know, between their transmissions or question in between their transmissions or comment. That's, that's another one. Those are three common ways to break into a conversation between transmissions of two people talking. Um, you, can all, you might also, also hear, <coughs> excuse me, break, break, break. That means drop everything. <coughs> excuse me. Stop transmitting. That's what that means. Um, there's some emergency traffic, okay? So when you hear break, 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 stop. <coughs> so again, allow people time <coughs> to break in or butt into your conversations by just giving a, just a, you know, a second or two before you start training. Um, so that brings us to net control operations. Sometimes repeaters will go into a special mode called net control. That's where one person is basically in charge of the repeater. They're holding a net. It's basically like a group meeting is what it is. Only instead of everyone just trying to shout over each other, the net control person will call on people to speak. So don't speak until called upon if you discover that a repeater is in net control. A lot of times you'll key up on a repeater and say, hey, this is KM6 LAW listening. And, you know, if someone wasn't talking for a while, they'll just say, hey, this, this repeater's under net control. Thanks. All right. And I know we talked about the abbreviation 73. Like when you say 73, that means best regards. Uh, don't say 73s. 73s. That means best regardses. Best regardses. That's, that's, that's not even a word. So just 73. You know, some people are, get, go crazy over that one. I, I don't know if that's that big of a deal to me. Also, when someone's talking about a device that looks like this, they're usually talking about a, what they call it, an HT. Uh, I think uh, way back when, that used to be called a handy talkie. I think it was a military term, but that's not what ham radios call HTs. They're actually called handheld transceiver. I hear that one a lot. So handheld transceiver is really what HT stands for. Might want to get that one right. <clears throat> 
Also, when you're on a repeater, um, you don't really need to say over or back to you or, you know, you don't have to end your conversation with, with a specific word like that on a repeater because most repeaters have a courtesy tone, a little beep that means the end of the transmission and everyone knows you're done talking at that point. If you're having a real tough time getting into the repeater, maybe it's really staticky and it's losing your, your tone from time to time and beeping, yeah, you might say over or back to you. Um, on HF, yeah, it is a good practice on HF because you're not using a repeater to say over or back to you. Um, that's that's cool to do that on, on HF. Um, some other ones <clears throat> that I put in here on this um, is do not talk about football or sports scores on ham radio <laughs> ever. A lot of people haven't seen the game yet, okay? Um, that's a thing. So I, including me, I don't know. I always have to sequester myself after a football game or not use the radio because everyone's talking about sports scores. So I don't know. That's a thing. So certainly last but not least is do not use the siren button on your Beofang radio, okay? Just don't do it. There is a siren button on here. I'm not even going to show you where it is just because I don't want to perpetuate this thing. I don't know why it's there. But when you press it, the siren goes off and it comes up through on the repeater. So every time you hear a siren on the radio, is a new Beofang user is born, just don't use the siren button. Uh, it, yeah. Just don't, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I have to thank everyone, all the patrons that make this possible. Those, those are the, the best practices, and the patrons have made this possible. Um, I really appreciate your help here. Um, so being a patron of the channel uh, gets you access to the DigiPi SD card image. In fact, that is the little uh, Raspberry Pi that you've been watching down here do cool stuff. This does every data mode you can think of if you just plug it into your ham radio and access all of the data modes you want from your phone or tablet device, no programming or shell prompts or anything like that. So being a patron of the channel gets you access to the DigiPi SD card image at digipi.org. But to be a patron, you go to patreon.com slash km6lyw. And I can't thank you guys enough. It's kind of overwhelming. It's getting to the point where I can't read all of the names here. So I, you know, I do the best I can. So Foo, Steve, NWTW, Ryan, Brian, Jake, Christopher, Ian, Tony, Jim. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got to scroll through so many names here. I, I'm gonna have to make the font smaller. I need like a new scroller, like you know, like a credits thing or a teleprompter. Someone mentioned a teleprompter. I, I got to figure it, figure that out. But thank you, patrons. If you're on the list, that means you contributed. It means you're a DigiPi user. Um, I really enjoy talking to all of you about putting together your DigiPies. Um, you know, I had a, a video a while back of a viewer Digi DigiPies, you know, the people who built the DigiPi according to the, the specs at digipi.org and got the SD card image and are operating in their favorite data modes. Um, so I'm always answering questions there. We've got mailing lists. We've got a, a Discord channel. I wish I could hang out there more, you guys. I, I know we don't hang out there as much as, as the rest of you. All talking about the DigiPi and data modes in amateur radio. So I really appreciate it, guys. I, God, look how long this list is. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I don't think I don't appreciate that. I really do. You guys are really encouraging me here um, to make all of this possible. All right. Hey, my name is Craig. <clears throat> I'm in California, and this has been KM6LYW Radio, and I'm clear. <laughs>